Greetings, planet Earth, and welcome to the third cycle of science and cocktails. This is a live transmission from planet X31, 20 billion light years away from planet Earth, reaching you, Earthlings, exactly now. 10 million light years ago, it was decided at planet X31 that the cooperation between the Niels Bohr Institute of Copenhagen University and Boone's Luz, this magnificent cinema, was going to be initiated such that science and scientific research can be brought closer to people. Science, science only reaches people through the media and in often cases distorted. It. Science in cocktails tries to give a unique experience where science, researchers and everyone else are on equal footing. The third cycle of science and cocktails begins with an exciting research where biology, mathematics and a lot of computer code meet each other. San Bruna Professor of Bioinformatics and Director of the Center for DNA Sequence Analysis at the Danish Technical University and Professor of Disease Systems Biology at the Novo Nordisk Foundation Center for Protein Research at Copenhagen University will digress over the achievements and challenges of sequencing the DNA of entire populations and its implications to the healthcare center. After an exciting session of questions and answers that will take place at the bar while smoky cocktails are being prepared, Buddha Ditya Shatopadhyay a sound designer who works with electroacoustic compositions based on digital manipulation of field recordings will present his work The City Trilogy, a series of sound works that explore the auditory perception of a city through sonic interaction with the urban landscape. <laughs> Please give an applause to Son Brunak. To uh, most of you, I, I hope I hope there's no aliens uh, here here tonight. Uh, DNA is our favorite asset in some sense. Uh, we are all uh, full of it, and uh, the talk today is about how we uh, we crack that.
piece of information and, and how it's structured and, and how we actually benefit from learning more about our DNA so that we also can uh, cure diseases and maybe also make more personalized drugs which uh, sort of hit the um, specific disease phenotypes that, that, that we all uh, experience during our, our lifetime. So I will start by showing uh, a few pictures. I mean, this uh, is a human X chromosome and a Y chromosome condensed. So it looks kind of messy, and this is also what it, what it is. So this is sort of a pair of, of, um, of objects. And here, the next, next slide, uh, I have two other uh, objects. I mean, they are, could also have been aliens, of course, but uh, I mean, uh, what have these two slides uh, in common? This is what I would like to start by touching on, because biology used to be what we call single investigator research. I mean, th that was sort of performed in small groups where you had a lab and then, and then you, uh, you made an experiment and you had an hi hi hypothesis and so on and you made the experiment and then you found out whether your idea was correct or, or not correct. But this has changed. I mean, biology has been transformed into sort of a big science where we are doing big things like, for example, sequencing the human genome. And why was that? It turns out that these two guys, who you can maybe see down here in 1986, they met in Reykjavik on Iceland, and they essentially uh, ended the Cold War, right? That was, was these, these two, uh, an actor, and I don't know what Gorbachev really uh, did uh, for a living before he became a politician, but I mean, these two guys, they, they, um, they ended the Cold War essentially in, 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 in this house. And that had a lot of implication on, uh, on biology. And um, before the Cold War was ended, essentially, a lot of the investment in science was going to physics and uh, large-scale sort of experiments like you know with the CERN um, um, uh, effort in, in Switzerland and France and, and, and also the sort of the moon landing projects and physics and astronomy was the big receivers of uh, funding for, uh, for science and, and, and money from the taxpayers. But after the Cold War did end, this suddenly changed. Suddenly could big projects also be started up in, 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 in biology. And there was a lot of shift in the sort of global focus uh, in the area from physics to, to health-related research like sequencing the uh, human genome and, and a lot of other genomes. And of course, some said that, uh, I mean, discovery, there was a, actually a, a company that had the slogan saying discovery can't wait within biology because we, we need the results now, we need to cure new diseases, we need to cure cancer and, 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 and a lot of other di di dis diseases like type 2 diabetes and so on. But some of the discoveries in physics, maybe they can wait because whether we, we discover some of these fundamental things now or in 20 years, maybe it's less important than, than whether we, 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 we do cancer earlier than some of these big things. At least that was what was sort of felt in, in the science funding area worldwide. And suddenly we could uh, obtain funding for really large projects in, 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 in biology. And as you can see here, uh, the human genome actually costed three billion US dollars to, to, to complete. So to sequence one genome of one individual did cost three billion dollars, around 20 billion kroner. Uh, a huge amount of money that was sort of not thought of or unheard of in biology before. So, so this has really changed and of course when you start projects like this, um, the technology behind the sequencing of a genome, for example, also becomes cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so that, as you heard in the introduction, now this price has been brought down maybe to 10,000 kroner or a couple of thousand dollars for sequencing an individual. So it has dropped considerable, considerably and that has made it possible to, to sort of imagine that we can sequence all the Danes, we can sequence six million people and so on and sort of sequence the population and, and get to know 
the genetic makeup of um, sort of individuals and not just one sequence like, 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 like this. So knowing sort of what is sort of embedded in the sort of set of chromosomes we, we have, again, this is a male chromosome that has been color coded with its two copies and so on, you know, the, uh, the graphics of, of this, sort of getting to know the data behind these, these molecules, this was what was made possible by this change in, in, in research uh, funding. So as you also know, I mean, when we take a chromosome like, like this, we have an organism here, we have cells and different cell types, and we have the chromosomes here. When, when you wind it out, what comes out of the, the, um, the chromosomes is actually a DNA sequence uh, in, made in this Lego fashion where we have these four different Lego blocks that, that uh, match up. And um, this is really what we, what we get out of sequencing. We sequence the, the order um, of, of, of these uh, Lego plots, so we sort of have a sequence also for each uh, individual. And uh, we get to know which base uh, and nucleotide, as the Lego blocks are called, uh, that actually make up a gene or, or sort of make up the regions between the, the, the genes. So what also is interesting with DNA is that it is digital, okay? This looks like something digital. And um, uh, when you look at a computer, for example, the one, one I have here, uh, we normally think of a computer as something that is digital. But actually, a computer is really a, a wannabe digital uh, because it is actually an analog device that tries its best to, to, to behave as it was digital. And often it cracks down, uh, in particular if it's a PC and not a, a Mac. But, but <laughs> I mean, uh, a computer is not a digital device. It is an analog device that is designed to sort of try to behave as, as it is digital. On the contrary, and in contrast, I mean, human beings, we, we look analog and, and we are not uh, looking very digital, but actually deep down we are digital and, and, and the sort of recipe for our genes and so on is digital. And it's an uh, interesting sort of uh, um, uh, aspect that often is sort of turned, turned upside down. And we, of course, have this, this feeling about uh, DNA that it, it's really something that is designed. I mean, when you can get a human being or you can get a pig or you can get a yeast um, cell or E. coli cell out of, of, of DNA, it must be carefully designed. I mean, it must almost be like sort of this kind of cavey wheel here, as we know, sitting on the, all our televisions and chairs and so on. But, but, but this is, of course, a, a, um, a, a, a misconception also, uh, because DNA is actually extremely messy. I mean, it, it's not designed, as de designed. and even if I work uh, at DTU, uh, I can tell you that God was not engineer. I mean, uh, it, it is uh, sort of very messy. Um, um, type of, of data and molecule to, to, to study these, these uh, DNA sequences. This is essentially the type of, of data we work with for a human genome. We have three billion of these letters and we have to find the genes and we have to find out when this one, this G sitting here, this Lego blot, has actually has turned into an A in some persons which kind of disease, which kind of, of phenotype do you actually get from that change in, in, um, in, in the sequence. So this is what we work with. But it is extremely messy, this DNA. It is not made by uh, an engineer. It's not make, make, uh, made like normal technology. I mean, if you go into technology that has been designed by, by engineers, normally you can, you can argue for the function of each component in, in, uh, in the system. Um, and um, it is sort of understandable how, how it's made. And, and, and it's also much easier to design, like, like for example, a computer or radio or television, because you don't need to design on the structure while it works. You should remember that we have been designed while we worked. I mean, we, we have evolved over time, but you cannot close down a species and then start it up four years later when you have cleaned up it, it, its DNA. 
I mean, you have to evolve on the DNA while the um, organism, the species, is actually working and, 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 and li uh, living and so on. So it becomes very messy in, in, in this way because things you needed maybe 10,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago or a million years ago will still stay in these sequences. So it, it, it becomes very messy data. Um, and, and, and this is sort of giving us a lot of trouble when we analyze the, the data. Another aspect that I can point at is also, of course, that, that these data are not without value. I mean, the, the, the genomes that we, um, uh, that we have, they code for proteins, and some of the proteins can be made into drugs like uh, insulin or growth factor or, or, or um, other drugs. So there's actually a lot of value to, to these data. And of course, also value in understanding how uh, individual genomes can be used to design uh, drugs which are more sort of designed for, for, for the individuals and so on. I'll not talk much about that, but this is also an aspect of this uh, area. Uh, drugs are made by company, companies, not by the state normally, and, and, and making drugs that cure diseases is, uh, is, is a business. So this is also an aspect of this area. So. Um, there's a lot of genome projects around in the world now because the, the cost has gone down and uh, here you see uh, time uh, in, in this graph here and you see, see a logarithmic axis, so, so this is $10,000, this is $1,000 and so on, so it's a logarithmic axis and, and you see the cost uh, going down sort of uh, exponentially when we have a logarithmic axis here and it's a straight line, we say that, that the cost uh, is going down uh, exponentially. So there's sort of a, a period where the cost is, is uh, sort of half, uh, uh, down to 50% of the original cost. So even if we had this exponential decrease in, in the cost of DNA sequencing, suddenly, a few years ago, it even went faster and sort of super um, exponential. And that, that means that essentially the cost of sequencing a human being or a plant or, or some other organisms will, will, will essentially uh, go, go, um, um, go away. And this has lit, led to a situation where there is a doubling time in the databases in, um, in the world that collects all these uh, DNA sequences. One of them is called GenBank that collects sequences from researchers all over the world. And um, today, these sequences grow also, of course, exponentially because of, of this decline in the, in, the, in, in, in the cost. So right now, I think it's something like four or five months. In four or five months, we will generate as much DNA data as has been generated in the last 50 years since DNA sequencing be, be began. So it's sort of doubling all the time. So it's exploding. We need huge computers to analyze the, the, these data, and especially if we need to deal with, with, uh, with entire populations and, and, and sequence, for example, all the Danes. And uh, I mean, the Danes is a good target population for this kind of, of, of effort because we uh, die young. I mean, the Danes, they are living in a very unhealthy way. Uh, so if we, you, we would like to study diseases, um, then the Danes is, um, is a good um, um, place to start. I mean, we smoke a lot, like you, um, and, and, and we also eat fat food and so on. And, 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 and so if you would like to study the relationship between the DNA sequence and the diseases, the uh, Danes is a good target. Don't go for healthy Buddhist or anything, because you will not learn, learn much. So, of course, when, when we look at human um, uh, organisms, uh, uh, organisms in general, we are normally, we've been looking for the hundreds of years for similarities. We say, okay, these are monkeys, these are birds, because they share features and so on. And, and so, uh, if, when you look at a human, I mean, it share a lot of, of, of features, for example, Homo sapiens, and, 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 and you can sort of work yourself up to all the animals, and there are things that are shared first with the primates, and then the mammals, and then other animals, and, 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 and so on. But we really need to sort of shift this view into 
uh, all the dissimilarities, I mean, all the individuality that we have in our phenotypes, I mean, all the differences uh, that, that we are, I mean, we are very different in, 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 um, in many ways. Even twins are different and so on. And we now have to zoom in on these differences and try to understand what is the, the relationship between the DNA of this guy and, and, and this phenotype that you, you, uh, you, you see here. Can we understand that? And that's, of course, more sort of a street credibility uh, phenotype that we have uh, here. But of course, we are really interested in studying how, how, uh, how the DNA uh, relates to, um, um, to, um, uh, to disease and, and, and so on, and how mutations in the DNA here, uh, what kind of impact they have, and which mutations are related to which diseases, to some mutations are related to diabetes, other, others to Alzheimer's, and others to cancers, and so on. This, this, is, this is the task. So this is a little bit of a complicated slide. It's also um, difficult to, to see the colors here, but what is going on at the moment is that what we call the molecular side of things, I mean, our DNA, all our proteins, and all the RNA that comes out of the genome as transcripts and, and, and a lot of other molecular stuff over here, we, we get to know it in a more and more detailed way. I mean, we sequence not only the DNA, but also how it's modified and so on. So we are really getting close up on the molecular side of things. But when we look at the sort of what we call phenotypes and diseases and so on here, it's quite coarse grains. I mean, we lump diseases together like cancer. Actually, cancer is a lot of different diseases that have some similarities, but they are actually, when we look at the sort of molecular side of things, they are very different, many of the, 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 the cancers. So one of the problems in this area where we should hack the DNA and understand the, the DNA is to get a better idea about the phenotypes and, and, and all the dissimilarities between individuals. And we should not continue to work with these broad groups of, of, of diseases and so on. We should make more sort of individualized phenotype profiles for, for individuals. And, and, and where do we look for that kind of, of, um, of information? This is one of the things that I will talk about in, in, um, in, in, in the talk to, to today. So a lot of this stuff, I'm sure many of you have also read uh, newspapers or seen on, on the net that, I mean, you can get to know your own DNA. I mean, there are companies now that will genotype you, that will tell you about your sequence, maybe not the, the entire sequence, but it will maybe tell you about some of the points in the sequence that are known to, to relate to specific diseases and so on. One of them is the famous company called 23andMe, so the colors are not so good here, but there's a Google funded company called 23andMe where you can spit in an envelope and they will send you back your, 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 your genotype. So if you'd like to know more, and I think it's even cheaper now because this is a, a semi-old um, old slide, um, they, 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 will, they will tell you about some of your disease probabilities and also uh, maybe also s s some information about where you, you, you come from, your family actually originally did, did, uh, did live in, 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 in the world. And um, there's a detail here, it's a little bit hard to, to see, but, but um, a couple of years ago, this company, 23andMe, they changed their business model. So instead of, 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 of sending you your genotype and your mutations and so on, and some probabilities for your um, uh, different um, uh, d d disease uh, frequency um, uh, probabilities and so on, you can now pay five dollars uh, per month and then you have a subscription and then you will be updated on new information that might explain some of these um, uh, mutations and, and, and maybe there is a discovery saying now this mutation, we now know that it's, it's related to lung cancer and so on uh, and you will then uh, on a monthly basis be, be, um, be updated. So this is a complete trend, I mean there is a lot of business around all this sequencing, it's not just sort of healthcare in the hospital uh, and so on, but, um, but there's a lot of business 
uh, on actually sequ sequencing people's DNA, of course producing the machines and so on, but also reaching to the individual so that you can get to know your, your own DNA. So some, some of our work is um, addressing all this business of trying to make more fine-grained phenotypes. I mean, take, take not just these broad categories of disease like cancer or, or schizophrenia, but making sort of more um, um, fine-grained uh, categories. O also, as you often have heard about, diseases are often studied one at a time. I mean, you have a cancer researcher there, you, you, you might have a hair loss researcher over there. I mean, diseases are sort of often studied one by one. But real people, they don't have just one disease. They, they have a mixture of diseases, and they have sort of a, uh, a trajectory of diseases over, over, over time. And so your phenotype is not just one disease, it's sort of a combination of, of mis diseases, and of course, uh, may one disease might cause another one and so on, but, but diseases should not be studied one by one. They should also be studied as they actually co-occur, what we call disease correlations. Uh, so we should sort of go beyond the, 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 the single disease analysis type of, of, of approach to this problem. So we work with Disease descriptions, we work, and I will talk quite a bit about that, we work about, uh, we, we work with electronic patient records because you, we have the DNA sequence of the, uh, of the individuals, but of course it's not very useful in itself. You need to have a relationship between the DNA and the diseases that this particular person actually uh, have, have had, and where do you find that? In Denmark, we can, for example, find it in our electronic patient record system in, 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 in the hospitals. We can also find it in the registries and so on. And I'll talk a little bit about that because that is part of hacking these data. I mean, you saw all these Lego block sequences. They are not very funny to look at in themselves. I mean, you need to establish this relationship between sequence and disease phenotype on, on, on the other side. So uh, 